after we'd been in Nashville for a few years, we were back home, in, actually in Omaha, and some guy in a restaurant just came over and he had recognized who we were, and he said, how did you do it? And we said, what? And he said, how did you get from Spalding, Nebraska to Nashville, Tennessee? And I never realized how that must seem odd to some people because it was always our dream. Looking back, it was quite extraordinary that the way it did happen. Once you're on the inside, uh, you don't do any good. Once you're happy, you create nothing great. Yeah, I like hillbilly music, you know. That's what I call it. I prefer to call it shit kicking, but you can't always use that in public. They worked with a lot of people who would come in from out of town who wanted to cut a record. When he started talking about how much money it would cost, I thought, this is bizarre. It was wild and woolly. There didn't seem to be too many rules. And if you came in there and you had some ideas, you had crazy ideas or crazy clothes, that didn't stop the Glazers. Think about the different qualities of all three of them. You put them together and it's really a masterpiece of business intellect as well as musical intellect. Probably the finest trio that ever came to Nashville, I think. We tried to sound better than they did, but it wasn't easy because they were family and we were not. They were just the greatest group. It wasn't just about the money, it was about fostering that kind of creative enclave. I think they just sort of demonstrated that it's possible. You know, it's possible for a small independent company to, to do big and important things.